Oh, hi, this is Apple Drinks. You call me Epoch Making. As I said in my previous video, I've been working on clocks, and I thought I would take a little time to look and see who else was working on clamp topper clocks. And what I found is interesting. I found that um, I don't see anybody else doing the clamping the way I'm doing it with this energized redstone going across an entire set of hoppers and blocking them all off. But Seth Bling had a design. And he was uh, basing his design on somebody else's design and so on. This stuff all bounces around. And when I combined the two, I got something very interesting. So I could call this the Millennium Clock, or I could call this the uh, Seth Bling slash Apple Jinx Clamp Topper Clock because it's a hybrid. It's definitely both of the designs and I've modified Seth Bling's design but this is still his design and all the rest of this is mine. Here's how it works. Seth Bling's side operates like this. It originally had uh, four sides but it, for reasons of my own I decided I wanted to have the entire thing in a 2x2 two two space because it's just 2x2 two two, and then it goes say um, 2 by 2 by 36 to give you 12 hours or you can go on and on up to I will tell you later how much you get with 2 by 2 by 121. I think that'll still fit into a chunk and uh, well I'll get to that. Seth Blank section works on this principle. You load an entire stack of stuff in there and then um, Essentially, once it's full, it starts releasing it. It's switching over to the other side. Again, originally it was um, four-way, but there didn't really seem to be a big reason to hang onto that, and I decided I wanted to keep it as two-by-two. Two. And uh, I don't think this is quite um, tileable in the sense of I don't think you can put them directly to each other's sides because I'm pretty sure that the... Uh, you might, you might stagger them, I suppose. But the torch here would be affecting things. At any rate, this is Seth Bling's design. And a full stack goes one by one around in a circle here. Or technically it goes from this side and then shunts through to that side and then goes back. And how it's working is um, it's looping around in this direction. And when there's anything in this hopper, the comparator goes on, powers this hopper and locks it. So while this one has anything in it, it's just loading this up completely. Once this has 64 in it, this one releases it and then it can go through and um, do these ones. And then they start unloading. This is a nice uh, medium duration clock. What's happening from here on in is I've got it feeding this, which is making a pulse that my system can handle. As you can see, it's going in through here, and I have uh, one, two, the repeater on three, feeding this block, and the repeater um, just being used as a diode, feeding this dust. And these two things are going to combine to produce a signal that's almost always on but will blink off briefly. This system, this setup does 51.9 seconds all by itself. That's Seth Blink's part. This is four hoppers with one uh, block in there. Actually, I'm not going to wait because, uh, well, I'll explain why I'm not going to wait. You got the four dusts on top of here. And these stages contain only one comparator and one repeater each, as well as one torch. And uh, five dust. Five dust? Six dust? I think five dust. No, six dust, because there's one right there. And how this works is as follows. If the um, stone is in this one, it's powering this comparator which powers this block, which shuts off this entire setup. This is all wired together in one. 
this and this and this and this. It's all wired together. And this is a diode with a delay. And that's carrying this signal right through here. The timing is super important. Because how this works is it's holding the um, system down. The previous uh, video that I did shows this at a faster rate. And letting it go sort of one step at a time. And when it gets around to there and it lets it go that one step, the two will converge together and release this one for one step. So how it works in practice is every four positions of that, which already are at a 15.1.9 second delay, release this one. So it's a gearbox. It's dividing it by four each time. So I'll show you again. This is a playing section with the um, the diode there and the three delay. The settings of these repeaters are important. Watch watch carefully and, and see how it's put together. Seth Blings is sensitive to the direction that it's going. So if you if it's not working right for you, try making the hoppers go the opposite direction. These are not. These do not care what direction they're going. And then you got the uh, delay of uh, one, two, I guess you'll call that three. It's one from the end in any case. And the comparator has no settings. It's just there being a comparator. And that's it really. Rinse and repeat. Now here's what you get. 51.9 seconds times four gets you 3.46 minutes. I have measured these, by the way. Times four, there's 13.84 minutes before this one will go off. And these are, I've, I've placed a piston on here and listened to the duration in which it was going, and it seemed to be the same each time. It's a nice manageable pulse. That one's at a period of 13.84 minutes. And this many gets you 55.36 minutes. So that's just about an hour in a space that big. Technically, um, you can keep going a little bit. Next one is 3.6 hours. And then 14.7 hours. So with this, you can get a 12 hour clock that is silent and operating on redstone and I'm pretty sure that it will save its position because the the blocks are going to be in one hopper or another. These are these things are contained within a container, so it doesn't do anything like toss an item out and let it despawn or whatever. It should be consistent and uh, will start up in the same position that it was in when a chunk is reloaded. And that's 2 by 2 by 36 blocks to get 12 hours of delay time, which is not too shabby. You can dig into all uh, a hillside or something and place this and that's not the end of the story by a long long shot. You see there's nothing stopping you from keeping on going so 14.7 hours times 4 is 2.46 days. I'm not sure who needs a 2.46 day clock or indeed a 1.4 week clock which is the next stage this is the wonder of geometric progression. If you multiply the time by four each time, it starts getting silly real fast. From 1.4 weeks to 1.25 months. You go from there to a little less than half a year, 5.064 months. And that's as much as I've built. There seems to be no reason you couldn't keep building them although it's hard to say how practical it is building a um, six-month timer. Of course, if you feel like building one like that, you can keep going. I've done a few calculations and you get 1.72 years after the 5.64 months, then times four, that's 6.9 years, then 27.6 years, and then 1.1 centuries. So you'd still be able to see the end of this when it was counting 1.1 centuries. But geometric progression is a wonderful thing. So it's 4.41 centuries, 1.76 millennia, millennia is a thousand years, 
7.068 millennia, 28.272 millennia, 113 millennia, and that gets you to the point where you're in 0 0.452 geologic age. Now, an age is a million years, so this is still a pretty manageable amount of redstone, and it's not going to use up all of your repeaters in order to get um, half a geologic age, or indeed 1.8 geologic ages, or 7.2, or 2.8 epoch. Now, I've done, a few, I've done some calculations, and this... Uh, may be a little bit beyond the reasonable or necessary, but um, in order to make a redstone clock that goes for a 2.8 epoch, which is 28 million years, you will need 131 stone blocks, 23 redstone torches. The 131 stone blocks include the ones that are in the, uh, the Seth Bling oscillator that starts all this off. So 131 stone blocks, 23 redstone torches, 28 redstone repeaters, 24 comparators, 92 hoppers, and 140 dust. It'll be 2 by 2 by 121 blocks, which is a fair amount longer than this, but you'd probably still be able to see the end of it. And, well, if the timing of it isn't exactly accurate, and you set this thing up, and the end timer goes off in only 26 million years, I'm going to tell you that you built it wrong. And to check that you have Seth Blank's thing put together correctly, and that you've got the right number of stones in the hoppers, and to tear it down, set it up again, and run it again. Thank you very much.